Hello everybody, thank you for joining my YouTube channel. We left off with the series of GABA immunobutyric acid or GABA A. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, benzodiazepine. We're going to stick with one benzodiazepine um, if, just for this, this case. But this goes for, for a lot of the other ones like Xanax, Valium, Ativan. You know, you could even use the other names, lorazepam, etc. Um, whenever you're dealing with this, consult a medical professional, physician, of course, that oversees your treatment. But uh, this, uh, there's a commonality I'm finding. Uh, so what do we ask ourselves when we, um, we take something that's meant for short term? which clonopin is meant for short-term anxiety, acute anxiety, right? Panic attacks, um, it, it lasts longer than the other uh, benzodiazepines as far as when it metabolizes over six-hour uh, half-life. So what we want to focus on is one reason someone would pursue taking clonopin is that they're dealing with chronic anxiety, so you have a medication that is developed acutely. The reason why I say acutely is because it is prone to addiction. Um, clonopin used to not be a narcotic. Now it is considered a narcotic and treated like a narcotic by the FDA. Um, it's something that physicians are now uh, becoming more aware of when dispensing it. It's getting harder to get for people that need it or uh, people that abuse it. Uh, so people that need it are being hindered by the people that abuse it. This is with any drug that has an addiction potential. Um, so they're dealing with chronic anxiety provoking issue. In my own personal experience, I stuck with around one milligram per day as I felt like that wasn't excessive or not too little. At my current body weight of 243 pounds, one milligram seems to be a dose that has always worked for me. Some studies show that you you know there's a two and a half milligrams over a 24 hour period is the top for anxiety disorders. So the cap for most anxiety disorders like general anxiety disorders, social anxiety disorder, etc., it's set at two and a half milligrams per day. Physicians have been known to put people who are uh, basically um, their lives are uh, drastically affected. Uh, their, their their quality of life and function is low. They tend to go over the two and a half milligram a day. But for myself, again, this is an opinion. One milligram is sufficient. And I don't take one milligram every, um, every day. I take it very sparingly. Uh, there was, I did, was off of it, uh, for a long time, almost a year. Um, and then, uh, I decided to, uh, try it again, uh, but not every day, uh, and not at consistent dosages. Like I said, if you follow a treatment plan with your physician, um, they're gonna, they're gonna tell you to stick with that. Uh, they want you to be compliant. Um, and, uh, uh, what we have is if someone is struggling with panic attacks that are hindering their quality of life, studies show that a dose of around four milligrams in 24 hour period is uh, appropriate dosage. So their standard uh, across the board, the physicians agree uh, from studies that four milligrams is about the top for people that struggle with panic attacks um, throughout a 24 hour period. Again, this is all up to the patient and the recommendation of a physician. Usually someone struggling with an anxiety disorder may start off at 0.25 milligrams or a quarter of a milligram with two doses over a 24 hour period. Um, and then you have, this goes for half a milligram or 0.5 milligram dose or a 0.75 or a three quarter milligram of a milligram dose. Uh, as well as uh, these these uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 doses are uh, treated the same over a 24-hour period. Um, so 
what we do have now is we have most physicians shy away from prescribing benzodiazepines like Clonopin because it wasn't designed for continual prolonged use for more than a couple of weeks. This is in a lot of literature uh, because of addiction. Um, although this is frequently true, physicians commonly do prescribe it for periods over long periods of time. Um, for people over long periods of time, even though this uh, classifies, you know, this this classification uh, of, uh, of medication has a propensity for addiction, there is an arbitrary time of around two weeks or more where most physicians believe addiction takes place. Um, so, clonopin is, uh, from my experience, is very hard to get off of you're going to experience uh, issues with your hypothalamus. Uh, it, it directly relates to your GABA-A neurotransmitter. And it, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to mess around. It's going to tweak your, your hypothalamus and it's going to tweak all the other issues that, uh, where you're having. Um, basically, you're, excite, you're so excited that you're ruminating your brain is mo your brain waves are moving fast everything seems like it's uh, um you're having a physiological reaction heartbeat so these uh these side effects of uh being anxious like you know sweating palms uh you feel doom you feel guilty there's a lot of things and i trace a lot of this stuff into uh you know our how we we look at the world if you're someone who feels guilty a lot, um, you know, your your mind is going to, especially if you're dealing with anxiety disorders, your mind is going to always feel like you're trapped in some sort of uh, episode. Whatever is bothering you, whatever, whatever your trigger, you feel trapped in that trigger. So what happens now is instead of thinking a normal person wouldn't feel trapped in the trigger they would feel a challenge in the trigger or they would feel some uncomfortable uh, comfortability to the trigger whether it be a fear of failing or a fear that you're going to make a mistake or a fear that you're going to be put in a position that you can't you don't know the answer you don't know how to get out of you're dealing with a large amount of uncertainty that is where a lot of GABA a comes into play to try to slow down these fears, slow down these anxieties, slow everything down so you could take, you could put a break on everything. The problem is, is that they work so well that people always go to them every time they uh, are dealing with a situation, but their brain is not being taught. Their, their neuro, neuronal networks, their, the neurons in their brain uh, the, the pathways, the neural pathways are not being taught how to adapt to these fears because the person is, is dependent on a substance and uh, it, it's something that everybody needs to recognize. It's needed for a certain point, but taking it won't change because what it's going to do is it's going to replace your own, uh, your own ability to, to create gamma butyric acid gamma amino butyric acid or gaba a it's going to uh, uh, hinder that and your brain is going to decrease the production of gaba a because of this introduction of synthetic medicine the into your system that is creating this balance but what's going to happen is once those are removed over time because you're going to build up a tolerance your brain is not going to know how to deal with the loss at a quick enough pace, at a, at a pace that is healthy. And then that's where withdrawals come in. And then that's where people start jonesing and start feeling like they need more. And there's a lot of people on these medications. Uh, and that's not the real way to go about getting better. Uh, the real w way is finding something that substitute that's healthier to deal with the symptoms. But not necessarily replace everything while you're getting treatment, while you're trying to understand how to create neural pathways, how self-acceptance, 
Self-acceptance is something that you can't get from a medication. And a lot of our issues have to deal with our acceptance of ourself, with acceptance of our own, our trying to, to rationalize our own ideas. You know, we cannot talk our way out of a lot of our, our you know, our uh, issues that go on in our head. But we can understand that we can't replace it necessarily with medications that, that are, once they're gone, once they're they're not in use anymore, um, we fall back into that old way. A lot of our progression is designed off of our ability to adapt to issues that bother us, to come into con concert, to be okay with whatever happens, uncertainty. There's a lot of lot of basis on human inability to face uncertainty and that is what it causes a lot of people to fall back on benzodiazepines and so um the from the medical standpoint from the physician standpoint point a lot of physicians don't want to be responsible for people on them because of this this issue they're basically telling you because they're saying hey no, I don't really want to prescribe you this. I want to prescribe you something else that may help that doesn't have as much of an impact if you go off of it or doesn't have a, a, an impact on your uh, your your uh, addiction to it. Addiction is when you need something, whenever something like let's say you're dealing with a situation that's very stressful, that provokes a lot of anxiety. And so you go to that every time. That is a addiction. Addiction. It's a consistent need to travel in a certain direction, where you need a, a, an element to to basically replace an element that you you're, you're unsure of that you want you want to get out of a situation you want to get out of. Um, and so, for instance, people that have a um, a fear of being at a certain place or dealing with a certain situation they will fall back on it and then when it wears off they are even in a worse position because what happens after a lot of these medications wear off depression follows Be because the person is back at square one they're back at square one so people who have the ability to feel uncomfortable and to be okay with feeling uncomfortable those people adapt to situations much much better because they can deal with uncertainty much better. And anxiety, a lot of it has to do with uncertainty where we, we want to predict things. And if we can't, that causes us to deal with a lot of undue stress. Thank you and you all have a great day. Bye.